Hello guys! Welcome again to my YouTube channel. So for today's video, we will discuss all about the microbial diversity. But before that, please subscribe my YouTube channel and don't forget to click the notification bell. So let's define first microbial diversity. When we say microbial diversity, it is can be defined as the range of different kinds of unicellular organisms, um, bacteria, archaea, protists, and fungi. So various different microbes thrive throughout the biosphere, defining the limits of life and creating conditions conducive for the survival and evolution of other living beings. The different kinds of microbes are distinguished by their differing characteristics of cellular metabolism, physiology, and morphology, by their various ecological distributions and activities, and by their distinct genomic structure, expression, and evolution. The diversity of microbes presently living on Earth is known to be high and is thought to be enormous, but the true extent of microbial diversity is largely unknown. New molecular tools are now permitting the diversity of microbes to be explored rapidly and their evolutionary relationships and history to be defined. Species diversity allows more varied and flexible response to environmental changes. More diversity microbial communities can better cope with disturbance and stress than can low diversity soils. Especially in the different types of microbes such as the bacteria, the fungi, the algae, the protozoa, and the viruses. Microbial diversity considers the vast array of microorganisms, the smallest forms of life which exist everywhere. So guys, there are three primary groups of the microorganisms. They are the bacteria, the archaea, and the eukaryotes. The bacteria and archaea are prokaryotes with their genetic material held in a single chromosome. So in eukaryotes, most of the genome is held in multiple chromosomes. Over 11,000 species of bacteria have been identified using microscopic identification of cell shape and metabolic activity, gram staining techniques, and genetic identification of RNA and DNA sequences. So guys, there are 500 named species of archaea divided into two phyla, which is the Eurcheota and the Cyrenarchaeota. Eurcheota, from the Greek word broad old quality, it is a phylum of archaea. It is one of the two phyla of archaea. They are separated from the other archaeans based mainly on RRNA sequences and are unique DNA polymerase, and it is an inhabit diverse environments. Under the Eurcheota, there are the halophilic and the thermophilic. So when we say halophilic, it is a Eurcheia that dominates in hypersaline environments such as solar southerns and salt lakes, methanogenic Eurcheia, are found in intestines, anoxic sediments, and sludge digesters, while thermophilic Eurcheia thrive in thermal. Serinarchaeota, an archaea that have been recently identified to be present in marine environments where they are responsible for nitrification. Under the Serinarchaeota, there are the psychrophyll and the extremophyll. When we say psychrophyll, it is an organism that can live and thrive at temperatures much lower than normal. It is a form of extremophyll. The kingdom Serinarchaeota has the distinction of including microbial species with the highest known growth temperatures of any organisms. Although they are microscopic, single-celled organisms, they flourish under conditions which would quickly kill most higher organisms. There are eight supergroupings of eukaryotes. All of them include the single-celled organisms and five are entirely microbial. Single-celled organisms. It is a unicellular organism, also known as a single-celled organism. It is an organism that consists of a single cell, unlike a multicellular organism that consists of multiple cells. 
unicellular organisms fall into two general categories, eukaryotic organisms and the eukaryotic organisms. Other organisms that are single-celled are the apobes, the algae, the plankton, and the bacteria. And you need, guys, a microscope to see single-celled organisms. Is virus a single-celled organism? Viruses are not classified as cells and therefore are neither unicellular nor multicellular organisms. Most people do not even classify viruses as living as they lack a metabolic system and are dependent on the host cells that they infect to reproduce. So what is the largest single cell organism? Alga. Biologists use the world's largest single-celled organisms, an aquatic alga called Cholerpa taxifolia, to study the nature of structure and form in plants. It is a single cell that can grow to a length of 6 to 12 inches. Can single cell reproduce? Living things reproduce, forming other organisms like themselves. Some single-celled organisms reproduce by a process called in binary fission. Material from one cell separates into two cells. Do single-celled organisms have brains? In an individual cell, there is no brain, but single cells must still make decisions. They must react to the changing environment around them, engage in growth and cell division, and many of processes. So do single-celled organisms need oxygen? Some single-celled organisms do not need respiration to survive. Microbial It is a microbe and it is a microscopic organism which may exist in its single-celled form or a colony of cells. When we say microbial cells, it is a pathogenic bacterium, a living thing that is too small to see with the naked eye. By using microscope, we can see them. The term microbial cells are very general. This term used to describe many different types of life forms with dramatically different sizes and characteristics. The bacteria, the archaea, the fungi, and the protist. What is a microbial life? Microbial or microbe is a general term that encompasses almost any microscopic organism, including bacteria and archaea, which lack a cell nucleus or other membrane-bound cellular structures and protests, and mostly unicellular organisms that lack specialized tissues and hence are neither plant nor animal nor fungus. So microbial cells are known to respond to various stimuli, such as chemicals light, temperature changes, and electromagnetic fields. Why is microbial diversity important? The diversity of microorganisms is critical to the functioning of the ecosystem because there is the need to maintain ecological processes such as the decomposition of organic matter, the nutrient cycling, the soil aggregation, and the controlling pathogens within the ecosystem. So which area has the greatest diversity of microbes? The highest concentration of microorganisms and metabolic activity is found in the large intestine. How do you measure microbial diversity? The range of microbial diversity can be initially estimated from first, the number of different morphotypes determined by fluorescent microscopy following staining with specific dyes that bind DNA of living cells only. Second, physical and chemical parameters of the sampling site like pH, temperature, or supplied substrate. Why is microbial diversity important for human health? The gastrointestinal tract of mammals maintains a highly diverse microbial population that plays an important role in nutrition metabolism, protection against pathogens, and the development of the immune system. It is estimated that at least 1,000 different bacterial species coexist the human intestinal tract. So guys, that's all! That's all about the microbial diversity. If you have any suggestion, clarification, or any question, you may comment your question in the comment box. And guys, 
please don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel and don't forget to click the notification bell. God bless you all! Bye-bye!